So the topic given to me is durability aspects in bridge design. What durability precautions we have to take for uh, during design of bridges. Durability का मतलब है सहनशीलता. Means जिस conditions में हमारा bridge बनी है, उस conditions में bridge ठीक तरह चलती है, service होती है. Up to 100 years जो हम design कर रहे हैं, वो study करने का वो study है. That is called durability actually. So durability क्यों चाहिए? I don't read all these things. I just speak actually. Durability क्यों चाहिए? Because we can actually avoid the repair of the bridge so that we can save the materials and contribute towards sustainability. Jo Jamara Dharir Sahib ne bataya hai subha morning, sustainability. So that we can have our uh, complete life of the bridge uh, intact. So, but it's not that durability is one thing, one word hai, or uh, entire India it is applicable. No. Depending on the area, the durability requirements will change. In your Madhya Pradesh, there will be some requirements. In Kerala, there will be some requirements. And in Himachal Pradesh, there will be some requirements. So, depending on the conditions, the requirements of durability will be different. So, conclusion, what is the purpose of the requirements of durability? will be different. So, higher the durability, naturally, higher is the service life of the structure. <coughs> now, now, we will think our uh, concrete is very strong and very strong. What will happen to my concrete structure? What will happen to my concrete structure? Actually, we also think that our body is very strong and very strong. But uh, suddenly, something will go wrong and we will sick, fall sick. It happens in our body also. Same thing will happen to concrete also. So, it is not uh, as strong or as uh, 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 durable as we think. Right? Different uh, types of uh, chemical actions will take place in the concrete, like a corrosion of reinforcement, alkali aggregate reaction. This is important with respect to Madhya Pradesh is concerned. I will discuss uh, in detail. And uh, sulphate attack, this also is important. And some physical actions are there, like a uh, 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 freeze thaw attack, which we don't uh, normally see in India here, which is possible only in very cold countries. Percolation of and permeability of water is very, very important and the most neglected part of uh, in concrete uh, uh, understanding actually. <coughs> that also I will discuss. So, um, when this problem will come up in concrete, the moment a concrete is placed, the durability problems will start if you are not vigilant. In plastic state itself, that is, as soon as you put the concrete, there are two types of problems you will come up for plastic settlement. Plastic shrinkage means I, I think you know all very well. Concrete mein aggregate hota hai. Aggregate is higher in uh, weight. It goes down to the uh, bottom, and the water will come to the top. During this process, water will get accumulated behind the aggregate, and after drying up, there is a void is there. That's called settlement uh, void actually. Settlement and on the top of that, you will see a crack actually. That's called settlement crack. The other one is shrinkage crack. The one water comes to the, the bleeding water comes to the top, it gets evaporated. Again, when, during a big buzz of a very high uh, heat or wind. So, there also cracks will come up during plastic stage. They are called plastic shrinkage. In hardened co concrete, many things are possible, like thermal movements, but particularly thick uh, sections. Uh, concrete, when cement hydrates actually, lot of heat is generated. If it is not dissipated, what happens? Internal cracks will come up actually. Thermal movements, corrosion of steel reinforcement, alkali silica reaction, they are major ones, sulphate attack, abrasion and erosion, again dams and all, it's very much possible. Fire damage we don't see normally, but it's also possible. Small few figures I am showing here. Freeze thaw. I'm not able to point out. Yeah, this is freeze thaw, which we don't normally see actually. Thermal cracking in the thick sections. Efflorescence also. Uh, yesterday, um, our uh, Goelsa bowled the efflorescence. Uh, I will again uh, speak on this. Acid attack normally occurs in uh, industrial area, industry uh, structure of this thing, and uh, shrinkage cracks. And this is uh, corrosion, this one. This is alkali silica reaction, sulfate attack. That is how they actually they look like, right? Now, 
for all the problems in the, for, suppose for body is having some problem means some part of our body is having a problem anpad bhi jante hain heart hai liver hai ye hai sab kuch problem hota hai in for so for as a civil engineer in concrete also we should know what's happening in the concrete what is leading to the problem in the concrete we know for our reinforced concrete is made of portland cement aggregates water and reinforcement steel all these four are uh, they contribute to, towards good or bad of the concrete all of them are responsible how if the concrete quality is good quality of the overall structure is good now a small uh, 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 slip about uh, cement actually this you know very well the cement has got is a gray color uh, powder 50 kg bag mein aata hai ye and there are four compounds are there that is c3s tricalcium silicates dicalcium silicates tetracalcium aluminate sorry for chemical uh, words but uh, it's uh, important and tetracalcium aluminum forate when you add water what happens this uh, <coughs> this 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 is the strength giving part calcium silicate hydrate this is formed okay along with that we have got a by product 1 plus 1 uh, um, uh, criteria actually when you get this you will also get this one also calcium hydroxide is a very very important uh, material as a by products and again it's a good or bad both the third one is sulfur aluminate it's again a small compound these two are again important there are besides these solid uh, compounds there are empty spaces are there in the concrete one they are called pores gel pore and capillary pore these are very small pores these are larger pores and the size of the pores will vary uh, from uh, very nanometers to uh, millimeters here to here these are all uh, in the basically that the calcium silicate hydrate uh, 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 pores and these are all capillary pores they are all responsible for the durability of the concrete if we can reduce them we are actually improving the durability of the concrete how we can reduce them is a question actually <coughs> and this 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 pores actually they can, they uh, they are expressed in terms of porosity in the concrete how much pore, uh, pores are there in the concrete and uh, the water or any fluid how easily it is flowing into the concrete that's called permeability the ease of any liquid passing through concrete is called permeability the amount of that empty space is called porosity this is uh, these two are important uh, properties a 10% decrease in porosity from 40% to 30% drastically decreases the permeability by about five times that is very very important this porosity the small pores if they are connected i will show you a figure will come later yeah here see in this one it's a very very solid uh, uh, structure in this concrete so the pores are very zigzagly spaced and uh, 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 this is possible with a low water cement ratio 0.4 or less than that if you use a very high cement water cement ratio which very possible in your absence contractor will add more water to get the uh, uh, easy workability actually so in that case this kind of voids they form in the concrete and the passage is very very high so in this case the permeability is high here permeability is low same here so it's easy to come to uh, these liquids to come to the level of uh, steel and what factors are influencing during construction cement type and the content higher the cement content higher is the uh, uh, strength of concrete and lower is the porosity water binder ratio as i told you if you use higher water again you are coming into trouble aggregate quality this is important with respect to that alkali aggregate uh, reaction this one and uh, compaction is very very important curing and also concrete cover they, they are all all important uh, factors one should be vigilant as engineers we should one should be vigilant during construction of the our concrete structure to so that to, to ensure a good uh, durability of the concrete a small example this is the live exam means we have tested this one this is a bridge uh, well uh, on a national highway and uh, this is a box girder bridge after about uh, i think uh, within one and a half years or so on this uh, on that uh, deck uh, a hole was uh, formed actually this one so here <coughs> as you see from the top this is how it looked like and from the bottom of in, in, inside the box uh, this is how it was looking like actually and the people have taken uh, some course and all uh, before we went there 
and uh, uh, what we observed that uh, whatever holes were made because of coring, there is a gap here actually. It is varying in height at different points in the uh, different cores. They have taken different cores from different places. There is a small gap here actually. It is coming to the top here. It is coming to the top. Later, we found that the concreting was done during somewhere in May, June time. The two in the hot sun at around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, concreting started. What was happening? By the time a concrete was poured and second time, second pour was coming, this getting dried up. And that second pour was coming and there was a cold joint was there, which they did not uh, uh, understand or realize. So they left it and because of the so loading of the trucks and all, it developed, developed a crack. At that place, later in the evening, the con concrete continued and uh, wherever that path was there, it, it left a hole there. So we should be very, very careful what time we are doing concreting and how we are doing actually. So that bridge had to be repaired later with cutting on sides and putting a new concrete actually. No reinforcement was there, only one and a half years old was that was. Water is again very, very important. We will give very least importance to quality of water. So, but uh, unless the quality of water is good, you can't have a good quality of concrete actually. So, even IRC 112 also talks about uh, quality of water, one should be careful and uh, I will not go into too many details of this one because of again time factor. So, the requirements for water is given. Any doubt is there in the concrete, in the quality of water? What you do? You prepare a concrete cube using a distilled water and using uh, your water and compare the strength actually. It should be with 90% of the distilled water concrete, uh, concrete cube. Then your, your water is uh, in good quality. It is, they were given in uh, uh, IRC 112. These are all the requirements of water, of what should be there in the uh, uh, water. So this I am skipping. Temperature uh, of the water, of course, is going on. These are all the compounds, uh, uh, possible compounds in the water contaminants actually. So you should be careful and they will affect your cement uh, uh, hydration and cement setting, everything, uh, all these contaminants. So you have to be careful. So this also I will skip. Curing, curing is very, very important. Actually, this activity is given to the most uneducated person in the field. That is the unfortunate part. And nobody is there to check actually. But that is not the case. Curing is very, very important to get the maximum out of the concrete quality actually. Well, like we get a fever and if there is any infection in the body, first sign is fever. Similarly, or cough, these two. For concrete, crack. If any problem is there in the concrete, Crack will come first. Then it gives, uh, tells us something is wrong in the concrete. Something is happening in the concrete. And the crack, uh, 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 the orientation is important to understand the reason of the crack actually. If there are uh, 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 vertical uh, cracks are there in a beam, we say it's a fluxual cracks actually. If the cracks are uh, uh, along the reinforcement level, then they are called corrosion cracks. The cracks are because of corrosion. So that is how we can actually get to know. Shear cracks, of course, we know in the beam. So the way the cracks are forming and how they are oriented, that is important and uh, they give some clue about what's happening in the concrete. Similarly, some zigzag fashion concrete cracks will be there actually on the surface. They are because of alkali silica reaction. So uh, that way they are important. I will discuss them again later. So, <clears throat> so we will discuss in detail, some detail about these uh, mechanisms to understand into how to address these problems. First is corrosion of reinforcement. What is corrosion? Basically, we know steel bar is there and it undergoes loss of metal, metal actually. It, it loses its mass over a period of time because of corrosion. Why it's happening? Because we are taking out the iron from the mother earth, iron oxide. That is the most stable uh, form of the iron. What we are doing? We are doing a lot of heating and all, um, chemical reaction, we are adding some chemical. We are taking its uh, energy level to a high, very high level to prepare iron. That's at a higher level. What it does? It goes back to its original state. 
माई के घर जाने के लिए इच्छुक होती है उसको देन इट रिमूव दट एनर्जी वट एवर इट इज गॉड इट लेबरेट दट एनर्जी दैट इज कॉल्ड कोरोशन ज्यूरिंग दट प्रोसेस इट लॉट ऑफ मास ऑल्सो इट गेट्स रिमूव एक्चुअली फ्रॉम द मेटल दैट इज कॉल्ड कोरोशन ना द क्वेश्चन कम्स डू ऑल मेटल्स कोरोड यस ऑफकोर्स लेडीज प्लीज डोंट डिस गोल्ड ऑल्सो विल कोरोड द ओनली थिंग इज रेट ऑफ कोरोशन इज वेरी वेरी लेस That's why it is very costly compared to iron. <coughs> Even if you take your gold ornament to the uh, goldsmith, uh, he will cut some amount from that this thing. Uh, that's because of the corrosion only. So the, the tendency to go back to its original state is called corrosion. This is what is shown here. Iron oxide. We are giving uh, uh, energy to to break it to make iron. Sorry. To make iron. Not able to. Then, and the iron liberates that uh, energy to go back to iron oxide state. That's called corrosion. That this is called basically electrochemical reaction in chemical terms. It generates electricity as well as some chemical products also in the concrete. That's again important. Now, what is triggering? Uh, uh, we think that uh, our steel bar in the concrete is very very secure. So much uh, cover I have given. What's happening to my steel bar? Why it is happening? It is actually although it looks uh, very uniform the steel bar, there are different uh, changes in the chemical composition all along the bar, which we don't realize, which we don't understand and realize actually during manufacturing itself. Uh, it comes like that. Different uh, phases are there on the steel bar. they are the uh, causes of for this triggering points actually similarly in the concrete what happens moisture water is different at different places in the concrete suppose this much length of beam is there entire length of bar is there at that place some water may be there in the center no water at the again at the corner some water is there so this difference will cause the trigger actually corrosion in the steel bar that is you can't have void You you can't stop water entering into the concrete because water concrete is porous. So this is small uh, diagram actually. This is actually in the steel bar. These uh, these two sides uh, which are generated on the concrete steel bar are called uh, cathode and anode. Two electrodes are uh, generated on the steel without your knowledge in the concrete. So at this location anode it undergoes corrosion and here it supports some chemical reaction called cathodic re reaction. Don't bother about these equations. Just uh, for your knowledge only, I can it is there in your uh, this thing. So ultimately iron product is the formed because of uh, corrosion. Iron oxide. This is the rust product actually. In this case you need oxygen and water. These two are very very important. If you can stop. Uh, Entry of oxygen and water into concrete, you are stopping corrosion, but it's not possible because our concrete is porous. This is one more uh, figure. Will uh, this thing? So because of corrosion, what happens? A first a crack will form all along the bar on the top of the bar in the wherever concrete is there. So that is the indication. A straight line concrete uh, crack along the profile of the bar in the concrete uh, is indication of corrosion actually. corrosion uh, this thing and then uh, that that part of the concrete will get separated from the rest of the uh, uh, beam that's called delamination separates out and then it falls off that's called spalling so these three uh, terms are there now how bad uh, this corrosion okay corrosion is happening okay how bad this corrosion because of the corrosion we are losing mass of the steel and also we are losing the tensile strength of the steel is becoming brittle actually elongation also is decreasing these are the uh, major uh, uh, effects of corrosion because of that the load carrying capacity of our beam or our member is getting reduced that is uh, means, uh, the, the problem if it, the corrosion happens and thing is happening to my structure no problem but this is what is happening cracks are forming the load carrying capacity is uh, decreasing and uh, ultimately it's leading to collapse of the corrosion uh, of the structure so if 5% of corrosion level means a 5% loss of mass will uh, reduce the yield stress by about 1.4% and uh, ultimate stress by 8.6% 20% corrosion will result in 
22.2 percent of uh, decrease in yield stress uh, and also the ultimate stress. Uh, this is the uh, means so uh, uh, pictorial this thing with the increase in the mass of the uh, uh, loss of the mass, the yield strength is uh, decreasing and also the ultimate strength. Similarly, the uh, yield strength and elongation also is uh, uh, decreasing. This is the initial uh, bar with the corrosion. This is the bar. What's happening here actually? The elongation is decreasing. Even for RCC also, same thing, the load carrying capacity will decrease, stiffness of the concrete member will decrease. So this is the uh, uh, one of the pictorial diagram, again uh, the, the loss. So this basically what's happening in the concrete, the volume of steel is increasing because of corrosion. So there is no space for the concrete, the, uh, the, the product uh, to uh, uh, accommodate because concrete is very tight. That results in cracking of the concrete. Why is happening? Yeah, this is important for again Madhya Pradesh concerned. Because of chloride in the in marine environment or carbonation. Chloride normally comes from sea environment, wherever sea is there, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and all. The second one, or when your water is contaminated. That's where the chlorides will come into picture. Suppose you take water from a flowing uh, river, but in the upstream there is one, some industry which is uh, releasing some uh, contaminants and all. You are picking up that water and using for your concrete. That may lead to problem. You should check your water. And uh, the second one is carbonation. In industries, in industrial environment, so where carbon dioxide is getting released, that the surrounding uh, structures uh, will get affected by the, this uh, uh, corrosion. Or even in uh, cities also, wherever uh, the uh, uh, motorized vehicles are there, they also will uh, uh, cause the corrosion of the reinforcement. So there are some limits for chloride content is there. It is there in the uh, uh, code also. I will not go into detail. So you can see here, this is a bridge uh, in Kerala which we tested. These are all uh, uh, piles. This is totally missing here, completely corroded. So it's all a corroded uh, uh, structure in uh, Kerala. These are again some corrosion related uh, uh, cracks uh, in a precious concrete uh, beam uh, in Kerala, PSC gutter. Because here what's happening, although the concrete is uh, in uh, good condition, the beam was in good condition here, the top deck actually there was a crack. And through that crack, the water was seeping, that uh, water was seeping onto this uh, uh, beam, beam and uh, it is a gutter and uh, the cracks are forming actually because of corrosion actually. So that deck, uh, there was a uh, hole was there. What hole? Are there any incidences of uh, collapse? Yes, there are so many. And uh, unfortunately, our Mandu Bridge also in Goa collapsed because of corrosion of uh, uh, steel reinforcement in India. And in other places also, there were some incidences. Now, what is the alternative then? There are some alternatives. You, you can use uh, yesterday again our uh, Goel Sahib was telling galvanized bars. Of electric poles actually, they are galvanized electric poles. They, they dip into the molten zinc. This, uh, so same thing with our bars also, they are dipped into molten zinc. They are corrosion resistant. They are available in the market. Our, uh, if you have come to Delhi any time, our uh, Lotus Temple is made of uh, uh, galvanized bars. They have used galvanized bars actually, they have used. Similarly, in uh, Australia, um, Sydney Opera House was made of uh, reinforced with uh, galvanized bars. So, madam, no need, you will get this. <laughs> Just listen and enjoy. <clears throat> so, the second one is fusion bonded epoxy coated bars. Ye actually, this is also available in India. This code is also available in the code. This 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 is also तो काफी जगह में यूज हो रहा है बॉम्बे में खासकर कोस्टल एरियास में यूज होता है अब यहां पर कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है आपको इसलिए यू डोंट यूज दैट ओनली एंड इवन इफ समबडी सजेस्ट टू गो फॉर दिस देन यू आस्क हिम व्हाई आर यूजिंग दिस रेकमेंडिंग दिस बार एक्चुअली इन मध्य प्रदेश आई डोंट हैव अ कोरेशन प्रॉब्लम हियर यू कैन ऑलवेज टेल दैट सो दिस ग्रीन कलर्ड बार नाउ स्टेनलेस स्टील बार्स आर कमिंग इनटू द मार्केट अगेन फॉर कोरेशन रेजिस्टेंट रीइंफोर्समेंट so some people are using in calcutta uh, one uh, iskon temple was recovered, reinforced with uh, stainless steel bars actually so abhi bhi naya naya aa raha hai there is a code also 
and uh, Ministry of Rigor Rules, uh, Road Transport Highways uh, has given a OM uh, recommending the use of stainless steel bars uh, in the concrete structures uh, close to marine environment. In uh, sea coast, ke paas, jo bhi hai, usme use karne ke liye, the recommendation diya hai. The corrosion resistant steel bar bhi aa hai, CRS bar bolte hai, Tata wala aur Sail wala bhi bana hai. Aaj kal mein, FRB bars bhi, the people are recommending. Yafar ka matlab hai, fiber reinforced plastic. Ye steel nahi hai. Ye plastic bar rahi hai. To isme glass fiber reinforced dal ke bars banate hain. And iska bhi ek document aaya hai. IRC ka code aaya ka aaya hai. Naya naya release hua hai. IRC 137. To some people are entering into market to manufacture these kind of bars. But for you, it's not very much required. Because you are in a very safe place as far as corrosion is concerned actually. So IRC 112 also recommends uh, different types of uh, bars, galvanized bars, uh, cathodic protection is not required, stainless steel bars, they are all uh, recommended. This is how the uh, fission point box code bar actually looks like actually. A green colored bar, it is uh, very widely used in uh, Bombay area, Kal Kerala, that's a Tamil Nadu also. Galvanized bar bhi uh, use hai. just I am showing you some photographs actually. Ye, uh, white, uh, silver mesh, this uh, color mein use ye wala hota hai. Uh, galvanized bars. This uh, uh, use of uh, uh, hot dip galvanized bars in bridges. This is stainless steel bar. Ka hai ye. India has not been used in India. So, this is not an example of India. This is the FRP bar, which is in the market. We are actually using it to plan it. This FRP bar is like this. This is plastic, pura plastic hai ye. no metal at all. Toh, Hyderabad mein aur aajkal Jindal wale bhi shayad they are entering into this market. So cover aur Goel sahab ne bata diya hai kitna cover hona chahiye. So depending on the environmental condition, so you need there is a minimum cover is there. So this is actually example I keep showing to our people. Kerala mein humne ek bridge aur ek structure test kiye the. Wahan par concrete cover 70 mm hai. In very good condition. After about uh, 20, 30 years of its construction, both as a condition, may have, you can see that it's a condition actually. We are making a hole to give some connection actually. So it's in very good condition. It's basically one test to test the corrosion. You can see it inside. You can see it with the bar with uh, uh, ridges actually, steel bar. 1930, 1983, 1984 uh, constructed. We tested in somewhere 2011 or so. Still in con, uh, intact actually, you can see this. 70 mm concrete cover. Very good condition, uh, this thing. And this is a uh, <laughs> structure in Delhi. Hardly any cover is there. You can see. And it is it's cracking, corroding actually. Delhi mein kyon aa Pani ka problem. The water used for concrete was a bad condition. That's why this corrosion was happening in uh, Delhi structures. This is our own building in CRR. <laughs> 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 oh, this was considered somewhere in 1975 or so, 76. So this is the condition. So I keep giving uh, showing uh, how much cover is important actually. So <coughs> Again, this is one more uh, photograph of that. That this is called actually spiling water. I told you, you know, this part, uh, you no, know, it is uh, delaminating and it's spiling off actually. This gets separated from the main body. This is called spiling. Uh, few days ke baad, ye giri jayega actually. Yeh wala cracks and all. Now, how to protect the concrete before, during, during design? We can actually use those uh, types of reinforcement bars if, if you suspect corrosion. Or you can actually, basically, I told you, you know, water and oxygen are important for corrosion. If you can stop them, you can only prevent the corrosion. For stopping water, you can apply water resistant coatings to the reinforcement, to the concrete structure actually. After construction, you, you, you forgot, you do something. Then you can use actually this uh, waterproofing or water penetrating um, repellent uh, uh, coatings to the uh, uh, concrete structure. Different coatings are available in the market, so they can be used uh, like uh, epoxy coating or silane coating, they are available. They will repel the entry of water into the concrete and they will protect your concrete uh, uh, member actually. This is, this is one more type of uh, uh, coating available. 
hydrophobic layer, pore lining treatment it is called. Actually, the, it will uh, 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 coat uh, that uh, compound all along the pore lining actually. This, this will repel the entry of water into the concrete. So, these are available in the market, silent coatings they are called. So, <coughs> So also uh, these days, the waterproofing membranes are uh, available. So at uh, different uh, layers, uh, it is actually applied to the concrete uh, uh, the bridge deck uh, so that to prevent, uh, the, to, to protect the concrete uh, deck uh, from the uh, uh, corrosion or other related problems actually. On that, uh, you will get this uh, asphalt uh, uh, wearing course actually. With the different layers, you can get this uh, waterproofing uh, uh, membranes you can uh, uh, use. Polyurethane membranes, uh, epoxy membranes that are available in the market. This is the different uh, uh, stages of uh, 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 application. On a concrete member is basically rough, rough blasted to remove the dust and all. Then this uh, coating is applied in uh, different uh, layers. And uh, uh, after that, to get a good bonding between the bituminous concrete and uh, the concrete, uh, the, the coating, a rough surface is given by giving this uh, sand uh, application basically. So that is how it is uh, uh, made. This also, uh, one more, this is again a surface applied coating, uh, again available in the <coughs> Excuse me. Again, uh, available in the market. So by doing so, it will uh, enter into the uh, uh, the concrete surface uh, and prevent the entry of water into the uh, concrete. And uh, some uh, uh, this is one more figure. No problem. And actually, some uh, uh, some admixtures are also available uh, uh, to which you can add to the concrete. They are called integral waterproofing admixtures. During manufacture, you can add these compounds, they will enter into the concrete actually and they will uh, go to the pores and uh, they will block the uh, uh, pores actually by a chemical reaction. They form a product and they block the pores so that the water does not go into the concrete. So these are available again in the market if you have heard Penetron, Zypex, Krypton, these chem chemicals are there. Crystalline based compounds they are called basically. So they are available in the market, they are people are people are using. In Delhi also they have used uh, in some of the bridge structures uh, this type of uh, chemicals. They are called integral waterproofing compounds. The next is uh, alkali silica reaction. So cement and uh, steel we have seen. No, aggregate. We think aggregate is very strong and uh, it does not uh, have any problem. It's a very net material. Actually, uh, it is not so in reality. Some of the aggregates, which we take from rock, are in the rock. Some active silica is actually in Silicon dioxide is active silicon dioxide. That is how our calcium hydroxide reacts with the cement product. Then they, it forms a gel and it, the gel expands in presence of water. That is called alkali silica reaction. Calcium hydroxide alkali, silica from uh, aggregate, these two will react, they will form a compound. That's called alkali silica reaction. This is the uh, this thing. It's again, this is how the crack looks like. A ASR, it is called in simply, the ASR cracks, they look like this, like this. This is the fellow who invented. These are all cracks actually, ASR cracks. This is how they look. Actually, the they the aggregate will expand and they, it develops cracks in the concrete. Why it is important to to Madhya Pradesh? There are some rocks in the in Madhya Pradesh which are these alkali silica prone. They are available in in uh, they are, they are spread in some of the places in uh, Madhya Pradesh. This uh, uh, basalt rocks or limestones, dolomites, and uh, uh, some sandstones and all, they are, they are there uh, in, in this part also. So that way you have to be careful about, uh, uh, you can't use any kind of aggregate. Be careful about using such kind of aggregates and get them tested for this alkali silica reactivity. There are codes are there in IS383, so you can get them uh, tested. And are, are there any examples of ASR in India? Yes. They are there. So you can see this Hirakut Dam in Orissa and uh, Rehan Dam just close by your uh, border actually in Uttar Pradesh and some churches in Himachal Pradesh and Assam also. <coughs> and one more thing, uh, today you are the boss of the site and you have constructed, you have gone away. After 10 years this thing will come up actively. By the time you will not be there at the site. The other fellow will scratch will his head, what's happening to my structure. <coughs> So that way you have to be careful. He doesn't understand what's happening to the structure because the white cracks are coming. 
<coughs> so these are some of the examples in the, the, the Herakut Dam uh, crack because of uh, alkyl silica reaction. This is Rihan Dam. Uh, <coughs> so these are the cracks uh, which are formed because yeah, these are the cracks actually which are formed because of uh, that uh, alkyl silica reaction. This is one more uh, figure. So there are some tests available uh, in ASTM and uh, IS383 <coughs> to test the alkali, uh, uh, to test the aggregates uh, to the alkali uh, susceptibility that you can uh, get it done to confirm that uh, my aggregates are safe and I can use them without any problem. <coughs> 2386 uh, methods are there. So uh, what happens to the uh, structure? The cracking of concrete, misalignment of the machinery of the ram, but this is particularly they are, they are there in the dams actually where a lot of water is there. You don't expect them in the superstructure somewhere, particularly dams or uh, uh, the PS of the uh, bridge where a lot of water is there. So there you will get, you will come across this kind of uh, problem. You have to be vigilant about uh, such cases actually. <coughs> so now how to prevent this? How, to, how can I prevent this kind of things? Because my alkali is reacting uh, with these aggregates, I can reduce the alkali there to start with. How can I reduce? I can add silica fume, fly ash to the concrete. They will react with our calcium hydroxide and will reduce its quantity during construction. Blast furnace slag, these kind of materials you can use. They are called supplementary cementitious materials, SCMs they are called. <coughs> fly ash you can use, silica fume or uh, cement slag, the, uh, uh, steel slag, they can be used. Also, other things are there like uh, 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 low alkali cement OPC, it is again a cost of proposition, but uh, usage of this kind of uh, 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 SCMs uh, like fly ash and all is very, very uh, useful. Also, you give a waterproofing coating after construction so that water does not enter into the concrete. So that can be done. Sulphate attack, again briefly I will discuss here. Sulphates again, they are there available in the soil. They will enter into the concrete uh, through uh, capillary reaction and they will react with our concrete, again calcium hydroxide or calcium silicate hydrate and they will spoil the concrete. That is called a sulphate attack. <coughs> Do not bother about the chemical reactions. Basically, the uh, uh, so soil contains uh, this uh, sodium sulphates or magnesium sulphate. Even in uh, sea water also, they are there actually. They will enter into the concrete and they will spoil the uh, concrete. So uh, uh, it is essential that uh, you test the soil for the sulphates. <coughs> so wherever water is there or the soils and all, they will uh, they spoil this. These are the examples of sulphate attack. The concrete will uh, get. Uh, see, the corrosion is basically a steel problem. And then it will attack the concrete. This ASR or sulphate attack, it's a concrete problem. Concrete will get first damaged and then we will uh, spoil the reinforcement. So that way you should uh, uh, understand. Some of the soil sulphate attack uh, uh, spallings and concrete will get uh, uh, damaged and uh, 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 spalling uh, takes place. So these are all examples of uh, sulphate attack. That's why the in the cement uh, in the hardened concrete the sulphate content is uh, reduced is uh, is limited up to four percent by weight of cement. They can be tested uh, by taking the powder of the uh, concrete powder. So it can be done. This is not uh, <coughs> really useful. But basically, this is one more type of sulphate attack, delayed detringate formation. This is basically happens when uh, a um, uh, high temperature concrete and concreting is done. Precast concrete members, uh, like railway shippers and all other even precast members, there this problem will come up, and that's why normally uh, not more than 60 degrees of temperature is recommended during the precasting of the concrete. So basically, <coughs> how can I test my concrete for uh, uh, durability? Ultimately, if I want to test, uh, you can uh, test uh, what is called this uh, uh, rapid chloride permeability testing, RCPT. If you have heard this one, this is recommended in IRC 112. So it can be carried out. 
uh, the, uh, this is as per one ASTM code actually. We don't have a code in the IS code. So the, some limitations are given for different uh, exposure conditions. In very uh, extreme conditions, uh, one, uh, this is the uh, uh, measurement uh, what you get from this uh, test actually in terms of coulombs. So for extreme conditions, uh, 800 coulombs. In severe conditions, uh, 1500 coulombs. This is the result of the test actually. This is what uh, uh, is uh, uh, recommended. Similarly, the water permeability test also is uh, these days are being uh, recommended uh, as per uh, uh, DIN method. If you see any specification, uh, uh, this uh, water permeability test uh, uh, is recommended. So, how much water is at what pressure water is getting seeped into the concrete uh, uh, member? It is uh, done. Even we also do uh, on the CRRI. <coughs> Efflorescence, again my colleague J.K. Goyal yesterday talked about uh, efflorescence. What is this efflorescence basically? Again, go back to our calcium hydroxide product. It is there in the touch, touching the ground. From the ground, the water is coming into the uh, concrete member and uh, it, it comes to the top of the concrete sur the surface. With that, uh, it brings out that calcium hydroxide. It does not stay alone. It brings out calcium hydroxide and when it comes to the top, it will react with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the forms what is called this white patches. Uh, this is basically calcium carbonate uh, patches. They are all actually. That reaction takes place wherever there is a ground uh, uh, connection is there uh, to the concrete uh, uh, member. So, these are all white patches basically they are called efflorescence. This, uh, this, uh, this is called, they are basically calcium carbonate only. So, is, if there is small uh, incidence, uh, it can be cleaned with uh, acids. It is uh, soluble in acid actually. So, with the acid cleaning, it can be done. But it is not good to see, it is not very pleasant to see actually. That is the problem. And over a period of time, concrete will lose its strength and uh, deterioration will take place. So, again for this, water is from what reduce the water cement ratio and uh, use water repel, uh, repellent uh, uh, coatings and add. Uh, supplementary cement materials uh, like silica fume or fly ash uh, to reduce the content of the calcium hydroxide. <coughs> but at the same time, the calcium hydroxide is not such a bad thing. It actually gives uh, high alkalinity to the concrete, uh, which is protecting your reinforcement actually from corrosion. Uh, that's a plus point of that. Uh, but uh, other bad points are uh, this one actually. Now, one interesting thing I will tell you is efflorescence. Uh, it is bad for concrete. But this high sink place is there in Andhra Pradesh called Borra Caves near Visakhapatnam. Borra Caves. Here, that because of this efflorescence, uh, the stalagmites and stalactites they are formed. What is happening? There is a cave is there, on the top of soil is there. From that soil, this uh, calcium hydroxide is uh, seeping and uh, coming to the uh, bottom and the carbon dioxide is reacting, it is forming a beautiful formation of the calcium carbonate actually. It is a sightseeing place, people go there actually. <laughs> so, I recommend you also go and see it. So, these are all actually that uh, stalagmites if you have heard, this is basically that one actually, this one. These are all. Then later uh, AP government has uh, done this illumination uh, by colouring and all to make it uh, more uh, attractive, all these are. So, this is another point of the efflorescence. <coughs> so, one can uh, go there. The one more uh, picture. Illumination they have done actually, but uh, basically it is in a white color to start with. So, to how to prevent, uh, what prevent measures you have to take during design? You can use uh, blended cements like uh, uh, fly ash added cements are available, PPC or slag added cements they are available. They will improve your durability of the concrete actually. So, you can actually add uh, fly ash or silica film like as I told you already and also people are using uh, corrosion inhibitors uh, they are available. So, they add to the concrete during uh, uh, manufacture. So, they can be added. So, like uh, <coughs> as I told you earlier, which if you add fly ash like materials and all, the, the permeability will uh, decrease as you increase the fly ash content uh, like this actually. These are some of the examples of chloride penetration, how it is decreases uh, with uh, different types of uh, 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 SCMs. Uh, like this addition of uh, 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 silica fume fly ash will improve the durability with respect to corrosion actually. So, this same. these types of uh, cements actually are recommended uh, in IRC 112, uh, PPC or uh, sulphate resistant cement, slag cement, they are all recommended for to improve the durability of the concrete.
sulfur resistant portent cement also use, is recommended for a sulfate attack to prevent sulfate attack, but it's a costly process actually. So instead of that, uh, other methods are normally adopted. You have to specifically require cement manufacturer to prepare uh, this kind of SRPC. Otherwise, they are not available. <coughs> this is uh, already done. So as I told you, 112, it is there. So these days, a composite cement is coming into market. It is approved by BIS code, actually. Normal Portland cement plus fly ash plus uh, slag. This kind of uh, cement is available in the market. So that can be used uh, to, to have a better durability of the uh, concrete uh, uh, structure. Similarly, microfine OPC also is there. Uh, there's a new code has come in uh, IS, BIS. This is for, again, uh, leak prevention, soil for the repairs of, con of concrete. And the new type of concrete is coming, coming actually, some people are working on that. That's called ultra high performance concrete. So there are some codes, uh, French code and uh, Swiss code is available. In India also, IRC is making such a code so to promote uh, its usage to, for uh, better uh, durability. So it's yet to come into the uh, picture. So, but uh, it's for your knowledge I am telling, ultra high performance concrete. Using this kind of uh, beams actually, it's imported from Malaysia, when bridge was constructed in uh, Maharashtra. So, <coughs> sorry. So, some uh, relevant quotes you can uh, see. <coughs> SP40 is there for repair, strengthening and rehabilitation. SP80 for uh, corrosion and uh, SP35. Is basically for the bridge uh, management system. It's coming up uh, uh, soon. So it's coming up soon. So actually, if you have got some 30, 40 bridges uh, in your, uh, uh, under your uh, uh, purview and uh, you want to uh, see which bridge you have to repair first, <coughs> so for that, uh, BMS is required. You will actually uh, inspect those bridges and come, come to conclusion which bridge is very bad and that you will take up for repair. So to assist uh, the process, uh, the BMS is required actually. So for that purpose, uh, a document is coming up uh, very soon uh, by uh, uh, IRC. Thank you. Thank you for the patience.